The next one up here is the uh, animation compressor. It's going to go ahead and use the uh, Maya keyframe reduction whenever you decide to export. It's a non-destructive process. Keep that in mind because when we talk about the next one. Uh, and so you're not going to lose any data, but on export, there might be some differences when you view it in the animation viewer. So just be aware of that. The next one is actually the character animation compression. This is a destructive uh, sequence. You don't want to run this <laughs> if <laughs> you haven't saved a copy. Uh, this is final export kind of deal. You're never coming back to this character. You, you're never going to touch it again. Then we go ahead and use this. It'll go ahead and minimize a lot of your source file sizes so that when you're backing everything up later, uh, you don't have to keep really big my animation files. Again, destructive, so be careful. Next one, better, to, I guess, kind of to demonstrate. So we'll go ahead and apply multi-shader to this guy. And material alpha. Down here in our base map, we'll apply texture, checker. And then we'll go back up. Then we'll apply a dark map, which we'll do, I don't know, RAM. So, as you can see, we got a, uh, a checker sort of pattern going on for the color, and then the dark map, I've actually applied color into. But let's just say, you know, you got a lot going on in the scene, and there's too much to deal with. You can select an object, and you can hit this button, and it'll go back only down to the base map. So, really useful for larger scenes where you have a lot of textures going on and you need to hide uh, a lot of your dark maps or your secondary channels and things along those lines. Okay, next one is uh, Create Center Delta D Group. Uh, lovable detail stuff. Again, we'll get into this later on. Next button is going to be Create ABV Bounding Box, which stands for Alternate Bounding Volume. Essentially, it's going to create a box uh, around our box. So perhaps we'll get into this a bit later when we have a more complicated object to deal with. Okay, particle stuff. Go ahead and move that cube out of the way. First one is going to create a particle emitter right smack in the middle of your scene. It emits particles. Um, let's go ahead and make those a little more visible. Particle shape. Give me clouds, current. There you go. Creates particles. Uh, the difference, though, is you can just create the standard Maya particle array and kind of work with it from there. reason we have a specialized button for it is, is that we'll add in all of our uh, extra attributes. So some extra little bits in there for Gabriel. So that way you don't have to go in, add your own extra adders, and hope you spelled them right, whatnot. Next one, next button up here, we'll create a uh, meter out of your mesh. So, and again, make those a little bit visible there. Amen. Brain's working. Let's work. Clouds, current. There you go. So, also, if you want to go ahead and check this out, um, you can actually export this. The scale is going to be wrong because I've actually just been changing the, the view for how they view in Maya. So, if we hit play, get a whole bunch of black. You can kind of tell that they're part of it. No way, went black. Oh, it's because I have that other light. Go ahead and delete that. And then we'll uh, do that again. Hit play and get a whole bunch of really big blocks. They're actually just sprites. So always face the camera billboard kind of stuff. Next three uh, buttons are colliders. So we have a proxy sphere, plane, and a sphere collider. Proxy sphere will just create a 
well, let me rephrase that. A proxy sphere, you would select a an object and it will create a proxy sphere around said object. But you also have to have a particle system selected. So play that and then say, give me a proxy sphere. Oop, playing backwards. And we don't have enough frames to see it. So as you can see, we got some uh, bounce going on in there. Kind of. Let's see. Frame by frame. Boing. Boing. So. That's what that does. And then, of course, you can make one out of a plane. You can make one out of a sphere. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one's going to be your bone LED. Uh, what we can do is, when we get into animation, of course, we get it further into this. But you can have the animation system call out bones based off of the distance from the camera. So you got a character running in the distance, you say 300 yards. You can tell it not to move his knee and not to move his ankle. You're not going to be able to tell at 300 yards. But when he gets to 150, oh, you know what? I can see the knee now. Maybe we, we'll, we'll have the knee go ahead and start animating. Then he gets to 50 yards. and like, okay, the, the ankle needs to kick in there now. So that's what that's going to do for us. Uh, the setup edit skins with bone LED button is the next one. This is this, essentially the same thing as uh, standard LED, except it also works with skinned and bone LED. So, you know, keep that in mind for your characters. So these next five buttons have to do with portaling, optimization, culling, that sort of thing. When we get into level design, we'll get into them a lot more. Um, but just to run over there, create portal room group, create portal room, create room walls, and then create portal. And then the final one is toggle portal walls and rooms. Because portaling rooms and walls and such should only be proxy geometry, because of a lot of the rules that go into them, a lot of coplanar stuff has to happen. Uh, they should, uh, you should be able to quickly hide and unhide those. And then the last two buttons, multi NIF export. So you got a bunch of objects in the scene and you want to export them as different NIFs. That's where we're going to go. Get into that later as well. And then recursively export from selected directory. So we can load up a directory of a whole bunch of stuff. It's kind of the inverse of multi-NIF export in that you have a bunch of directories with a bunch of different files in there and you just want to say, convert it all good. And that's what that's going to do for you. So that covers the uh, Gamebryo bar. And the next little section here, we'll be going over the uh, new multi-shader. So, be right back.